Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott's Selections here for Sunday, February 23rd. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, didn't we already do this? And the answer is yes. Again, I made a video last night on the XFL, and we have a play there uh, in a matchup between the DC Defenders and the LA Wildcats. However, there was one other game that I did notice that I did like a lot, and I decided to make a separate video on it. I would have made a video about it uh, last night. I didn't really have time to look at all the lineups and look at the projections and everything until now. So for that reason, there is one play that I like in the NBA, and we'll be even that out as well. And that play of the day is going to be on the Washington Wizards and the Chicago Bulls game, which should be taking place at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And we like the Washington Wizards minus 2, and that line is available on DraftKings at minus 112, and that will be the play of the day. Now, a couple of reasons why I like this. Some of the reasons might sound a little bit repetitive, because of the fact that we literally just talked about the Bulls a couple of days ago against the Hornets and got a win there. But uh, the first reason why I like the Wizards here is based on the line movement. Wizards open up as a pick -em. They've been bet up to minus two. It's already starting to move to minus two and a half with some uh, decent juice at other sites. Uh, if you look at DraftKings, it's still minus 112. FanDuel's gone to two and a half. Fox bets up to minus 118. This line should close somewhere around three, potentially three and a half. I see a lot of movement on this moving forward. And for that reason, I think we should get in early at minus two. Now, the main reasons why the line has moved so much is based on a couple of factors, but the first factor, I mentioned it before, is the fact that I am firmly convinced that the Chicago Bulls are tanking. Now, Chicago, so far in this season, has been very underwhelming, of course. People have been talking about if Boylan should be fired. The answer is yes, but I don't know if they're going to keep him or not. Either or, Chicago has completely imploded, and they've pretty much embraced their reality of being a bottom feeder in the Eastern Conference. They've lost each of their last eight games, and they also have a ton of injuries, which makes me believe that they are in the middle of a massive tank job. If you look at who is currently injured, you have Chris Dunn, Hutchinson, Markinen, Carter, Cornette's not even playing now. So they also lost their backup center. He's not playing. Porter's still injured and Valentine. So based on what's exactly going on, they've lost seven key contributors on the roster and pretty much four of their five original starters, with the exception of Zach Levine. They're all injured. This team stinks. I know that there are some rumors that Wendell Carter could potentially be coming back today, but that seems relatively doubtful based on some of the... Um, Twitter feeds that I've been looking at and some of the information I've tried to gather. It seems like he probably will be good, will be back for the team's next game, but I personally do not expect him to play in this game. Even if Carter does play, he hasn't played in over a month or so, so I expect him to be on a pretty heavy minutes restric restriction as they will try to keep him relatively healthy and ease him back into the fold because of the fact that he's still a very young player and he's still a very talented player. There's no reason to rush him back when your team is 19 games under. So those are the first two reasons. You have the line movement as well as the injuries for the Bulls. Now, the third reason why is because of the fact that the Washington Wizards have actually been... Well, they, they haven't been... They've been awful on the road. They're 7-20 and 20 away from home. But they are still technically in the playoff hunt, so they are not officially tanking because of the fact that the Eastern Conference towards the bottom is pretty underwhelming. I know that the Nets are pretty much locked into a 7 spot right now, and they're under 500. The 8 spot's still up for grabs. I believe Orlando has it now. I'm not even sure anymore. But Washington is still in the hunt technically for a playoff spot, and based on the fact that they're still paying Wall 30-something million, 40-something million, whatever his contract is, it's absolutely terrible. But since they're still on the books for Beal, and the fact that he's should have been an all-star and everything like that, I think the Wizards will try to go for it to make a playoff spot here. And they also just managed to beat the Bulls uh, about 12 days ago. They beat the Bulls uh, at home. It was a home game, but they did win by 12. And now they're playing on the road. And I still just think that this spread of minus two is a little bit too low. If you look at the lineups for the Bulls in that game, Zach Levine dropped 41 points. And they still lost by 12. I mean, you're going through the whole lineup here. Sadoransky had 19. Hutchinson played in that game. He had nine, Cornette played, now both of them are injured. Uh, I just think this is going to be a serious problem. For the Wizards, though, they have actually been pretty healthy lately. They had some injuries earlier in the year. Beal's been fantastic, That no real reason to go into that. He's been unbelievable. But the main reason why I think the Wizards are a bit undervalued is because of the return of Rui Hachimura to the starting lineup as he ended up returning back on February 3rd. He's been really good. Ever since he came back, people thought that the Wizards took a bit of a risk taking him out of Gonzaga, but he's averaging 14-6, and six, and against the Bulls in the meeting 12 days ago, he did have 20 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. So he had a very solid game, very efficient all around, 
And I don't really think the Bulls are going to have much of an answer, especially with the amount of injuries that they have currently to pretty much every position. Plus, I also didn't mention this. We're on about reason six or so. I don't even remember. But the Bulls also played yesterday. So they are on the second end of a back-to-back while tanking. They ended up losing to the Suns yesterday at home by the score of 112-104. to uh, The Bulls were actually winning a decent amount of that game. They were up double digits entering the half. Then they got absolutely blown out in the second half, and they got outscored by 18. Uh, Kobe White had a very solid game as he ended up having 33 points. But defensively, Chicago couldn't stop Aiton as Aiton had 28 points and 19 rebounds. I think that the Wizards, despite the fact that they don't have a big man, it just shows how Chicago's uh, front-line defense is very underwhelming. And I think Hachimura had a very solid game there. Chicago, though, had an unbelievable amount of turnovers in that game, just to show how sloppy they are with the basketball. Chicago turned the ball over 26 times. That it, I don't even know that that's really possible. That, that's a lot of turnovers. Washington's defense is an absolute mess, but Chicago is in a bigger mess, and they also have a ton of injury issues. I think the Wizards should be able to win this game. I think it will be closer than that 12-point game that the Wizards had against the Bulls roughly 12 days ago. But at the end of the day, I think the Wizards just have a little bit too much firepower, and even though the Bulls are struggling, I think they'll look even worse in the second half once they have some tired legs after having to play for the second straight night. So for that reason, the second play of the day on Sunday, February 23rd, is going to be on the Washington Wizards minus 2, and that line is available on DraftKings at minus 112. Other than that, though, not really much else to give out for leans because I already did that on the video with the uh, XFL play. So if you want to check that one out, that's going to be the video underneath this one on the playlist. But once again, the second play of the day is going to be on the Washington Wizards minus two. And that one is available on DraftKings at minus 112. That's good over the installment of Scott's selections here for Sunday, February 23rd. And good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.